Hi, and welcome to our short briefing about flight crew briefings. Briefings, mainly the departure briefing and the arrival briefing, are part of our everyday life as pilots. To make these briefings an even more interesting and valuable part of our work, Airbus has developed a new policy. This video will give you information on the changes of this policy and how you can adapt it to your own briefing policy. We will also show you some practical examples. But before joining the cockpit, let's have a short review what briefings are intended for. Flight crew briefings are first of all your essential tool for management of threats and errors that may affect your flight. The main purpose of flight crew briefing is the enhancement of safety and the management of risks. Think out of the box and you will more easily identify potential threats that may affect your intended operation. Then you discuss the mitigations of those threats together with your crew. The second purpose of your briefing is the identification of significant differences or deviations to standard operations. Everything that is not daily routine. At the end of the briefing, you and your other flight crew members should have a shared mental model of the intended operation and the threats with its mitigations. Something important. Briefing must not be confused with repeating standard operating procedures. Your briefing should complement the SOPs, but it should not be a repetition of the SOP items. To make this clear, Airbus has moved a lot of content from the traditional FCTM briefing to SOP items during cockpit preparation. Those items are marked as both pilot items. The content of those both pilots items will not be repeated during the new briefing. I'll give you some examples. Both pilots items is the aircraft acceptance, the FMGS check or the fuel check. They, that should be completed before starting the briefing. Let's now observe a crew preparing for a takeoff in New York, John F. Kennedy, on a flight to Boston. It is the last sector of the crew. They had several sectors on that day. Okay, I think we're ready. Your pilot monitoring, so yep. go ahead with the brief. Okay, so we are planning uh, runway 04 right for departure with the Kennedy 5 uh, SID. Initially, climb to 5,000 feet with an MSC uh, in our departure segment of 2,000 feet. And in terms of uh, fuel, uh, we have no extra. Okay, that's great. As we taxi out, we need to think about the hotspot at Juliet, even though four left is closed by no time. For four right, we talked about it in the um, briefing room. We've only got 19 meters of stop margin on the wet runway there. There's no engine out SID, so as you get airborne, it's going to be SOPs. Mm -hmm. So what do you see as the, uh, the threats? I feel a little bit uh, tired from the previous uh, long flight. And uh, that's it. Yeah, I'm the same. I see the threats the same. We're both a bit tired. It's the end of a long day. Uh, it's going to be even more uh, stressing with the high amount of uh, radio uh, transmissions around New York. So for the mitigations of that, we need to be really vigilant mm -hmm. with the radio calls. We need to listen out for our call sign, listen out for our clearances. Of course, in the event of uh, failure, uh, when I take the uh, radios, that we need to remember to prioritize to fly, navigate, and communicate uh, after that. Yeah, okay. totally agree. Questions? No, thank you. Let's go. What have you seen in this video? First of all, you have noticed that the pilot monitoring started the briefing, and he states the view of the intended plan after checking the FMGS setup. Why do we suggest that the pilot monitoring starts? Simply because by having the PM initiating the briefing section, the PF can be assured that the pilot monitoring has the same expected monitoring framework. 
the plan part of the briefing should normally only contain the intended takeoff runway, the SID designator, the first cleared altitude, the minimum sector altitude or minimum off route altitude for the climb trajectory, and the extra fuel and time. Afterwards, you observe that the pilot flying briefing gave additional strategic operational items important for the pilot monitoring. This part contains items like hotspots of the planned taxi route, the stop margin for RTO, briefing of the engine out departure route, and his considerations for a potential return landing. It is a good idea to shortly recap non-standard operations at that stage. For example, if you have a cross-split engine start, it might be smart to shortly brief this procedure during that stage. For the identification of possible threats, it is again the pilot monitoring to start. The briefing is continued with the joint discussion of the mitigation strategies, and at the end of the briefing there is a miscellaneous section. Items that could be discussed at this stage are the level of automation intended after takeoff, or you could take the opportunity to brief a cockpit observer. Let's have a look at another briefing, this time for a night flight from Frankfurt to Johannesburg. Are you ready for the uh, departure briefing? Yes, I'm ready. So I checked the box. The plan is to mm -hmm. depart via uh, runway 18. Yes. The departure route Aniki 9 Lima, mm -hmm. first cleared altitude 4,000 feet, mm -hmm. where we have an MSA during departure of 3,300 feet. Okay. And uh, we have for uh, extra fuel for 10 minutes. Okay, good. Yeah, that matches my plan as well. Uh, to complement this, uh, this plan, um, I expect to be pushed back facing, facing west, and then we continue on taxiway in November to mm -hmm. the runway 18. Mm -hmm. Um, for the uh, rejected takeoff, we don't have much stop margin, only around right. 200 meters, so that's mm -hmm. not much. Um, for the uh, engine out SID, uh, it's, it differs from the normal SID, so in this case we'll climb straight ahead to 2,000 feet, and when we reach 2,000 feet we'll make a left turn to view our uh, Fox Fox mic. And as the MSA is below 4,000 feet, slightly below 4,000 feet, I would recommend to uh, climb to 4,000 feet in this case. Yeah, fine. And to, uh, for the return case, um, we are above max landing weight, mm -hmm. uh, but we have already done a calculation to come back, so uh, this is an option to, to, to land on runway 25 again. Do you see any threats uh, for our uh, departure? Yeah, I realized we have uh, pretty much tailwind for takeoff, close to the limit. Yeah, so, true. Uh, so yes. according to our calculations now, nine knots, so we have yeah. to consider the wind during the takeoff, I think. Yes. And also we know that we have just one reverser operative. Exactly. Um, how d did we mitigate that? The threat. We calculated already in our uh, performance calculation one reverse in up. Yes. So this is True. done. Okay. And we have to keep this in mind if we have to do another calculation for a diversion. Yeah. Good uh, point. Landing performance. Yeah. Good point. Okay. In case of rejected takeoff or landing mm -hmm. uh, later, um, I will use both reverses. All right. Do you see any other threats? No, not at the moment. That's okay. it. I think. Me neither. Okay. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Let's now look at the arrival briefing. The arrival briefing works in a similar way as the departure briefing. Here's the structure of the arrival briefing. It follows the same logic as the departure briefing, with the pilot monitoring starting the plan part and the threat identification. The new briefing will require only limited head downtime since the FMGS setup has been thoroughly checked by both pilots independently according to new SOPs before commencing the briefing. Here is our arrival scenario on a flight into Phuket. Let's join the crew in the cockpit. So we are shortly before top of descent. Yeah. You've checked everything. Are you ready for Yes, briefing? I did. I am ready. So the plan is, as I perceive it, that we're, we're flying now in Bonsafsa, that we expect the Safsa uh, arrival. Mm -hmm. 
The uh, minimum off route altitude right now is 7,000 feet, uh, and the MSA is 3,000 feet. Mm -hmm. We're doing an ILS approach, runway 27. All right. The minimum descent altitude is 540 feet. And the missed approach procedure is uh, we fly straight ahead 2,500 feet and then making a right turn direct uh, seven miles uh, from the ILS DME. Mm -hmm. And we will maintain 2,500 feet during the approach, during the missed approach. Mm -hmm. uh, we do not have any additional fuel for time being. That's okay. my... my yeah. uh, my plan to Fine, fly. that's what I've set up and I will fly the ILS uh, Umbe 2.7, um, fully managed. Okay. And with configuration full okay. landing. Uh, we know now we have wet runway. Yeah. And uh, light bumpy crosswind conditions. Yeah. Do you see any further threats? Yeah, like I mentioned, uh, I see one threat that we have uh, no additional fuel and the weather is yeah. close to the minimum. Yeah. So, in case we don't see the runway at the minimum, uh, we should um, we should take the decision to uh, to fly straight to the um, to the alternate aerodrome. To the alternate, yeah, fine. Because we don't have much mm -hmm. time to to circle around and yeah. then make a choice. Yeah, that's true. So, if weather is an issue at the minima, we then we uh, divert to the alternate. Yeah. Okay. I see. And the second one would be I'm quite unfamiliar with the aerodrome. I've never been there. Yeah. So. Okay, no I see. Experience. Yeah, I flew there several times, so we maybe we have to be aware of the offset of the localizer. It's about two degrees offset to the okay. runway, and we have to align to the uh, runway center line, short on final. Yeah. And uh, the runway then will have a slight downhill slope. Okay. So I will try to make a firm landing, okay. no long yeah. flare. Okay. And as I mentioned, full reverse, all standard. Okay. That's all the threats that I can foresee. All right, okay, thank you. Thank you. Here are some hints that make a good briefing. Briefing should never be routine. They are intended to break the routine. Therefore, a good briefing requires out-of-the-box thinking beyond the pure reflection of SOPs. Briefing should have a threat-focused view. Source of your briefing should be all information you got from the pre-flight preparation, your professionalism and the sum on the experience of all crew members who operate the flight. Your briefing technique is good if you have a bird's eye view on all information so as to identify and prioritize threats that may affect your operation. Your briefing should also contain significant differences or deviations to standard operations on that day. What about repetition of SOP and abnormal procedures in the briefing? Normally this should not be done on a routine basis. A briefing should only be used to refresh SOPs, procedures or techniques if they are expected or likely. I'll give you an example. In case of a wind shear warning in the 80s, it might be a good element of the briefing to shortly memorize the memory items of this wind shear procedure. Before concluding this session, a few words on the length of the briefing. There should be a variation in the amount of detail and in the length. You make a longer, more detailed briefing if, for example, one of your pilots has limited experience or is not familiar with the airport or the approach. Also in case of complex airports or procedures, let's think of a CAT C airport, your briefing might be longer. On the other hand, a shorter briefing restricted to the minimum items will be possible in the case of, for example, operating to a well familiar airport or the repetitive operation by the same crew. In this case, you can restrict the briefing to the items mentioned in the FCTM table. And remember, as a general hint, a long briefing is not necessarily a good one. Let's now join our crew and see another example of an arrival into Zurich, Switzerland. Okay, I think we're all set up in the FMS. We both looked at it. So mm -hmm. why don't you start the uh, briefing? 
Yeah, okay, I looked at it. So we are currently clear direct Trasadingen, and the plan is to fly an ILS approach runway 14, which is set up in the box. Uh, the minima is 1602, which is 200 feet above uh, aerodrome elevation. And uh, the missed approach I checked in the box also. We can uh, follow the NAV uh, straight ahead 5.1 miles, then we turn left, heading north, climbing 4,000 feet, and then we can continue with the box. And um, I realized that we have no extra fuel. Okay. Okay. So what I'm planning on doing is flying a standard ILS, uh, fully managed, uh, with flat full. Okay. Okay, once uh, on the runway, I use minimum reverse for uh, the airport, keep the noise down. We've only got 445 meters of uh, stop margin. Mm -hmm. So that's something we need to think about. The BTV will be set up for uh, Hotel 2. That's the second of the high speeds right. uh, towards the bottom end. And uh, we'll come off that. And there is a hot spot before we cross the runway, before we go to our next when we taxi parking. Yeah. All right. Uh, I've got nothing uh, non-standard for the arrival in there. Uh, let's talk about threats now. What do you see? You know, we have the weather close to the minima, close to the 200 feet, the ceiling. And uh, also we have slight tailwind. Yeah, so for me, that's a threat that I see right now. Yeah. And pretty short margin. So if we have a long float, so you have to, uh, you have to be careful with a long floating landing. Or otherwise, we can use the reverse. We plan now to, to uh, use idle reverse now. If you need more reverse, then we can open the reverse yeah. during the landing roll. Yeah, we, it's, a, it's a place where there's a lot of high ground. Uh, we briefed the MSAs. Uh, within, there was a note within 17 miles, it's 5,900 feet. Yeah. So that's a threat as well. So the mitigations then, uh, we'll plan on doing a completely normal landing. But as you say, if we do float, uh, we either uh, use full reverse or we do a go round. Uh, the weather's not so great. The mitigation is to fly completely standard using the automatics and our uh, SOPs. Exactly. Yeah. Um, anything else we could do to mitigate the threats? No, I think that about covers it. Yeah, I good, think so too. Good observance of uh, normal procedures. Okay. Okay. Yeah, questions? fine. No questions so far. I wish you happy landings with the new briefings that make your flights not only more interesting and fun, but overall safer.